With ports in Russia being attacked by Ukrainian drones, the supply lines are being squeezed. If those troops in the Crimea cannot get fuel and ammunition, they are very quickly going to run out. Well, I think the attack on the Russian oil tanker SIG, which we know has been ploughing through the Black Sea to Syria, supplying the Russian troops, significant amount of Russian troops, although they are withdrawing to be uh, moved to Ukraine with fuel and ammunition. Um, we know that Russian military ships can't get through the Bosporus. So this has been a key lifeline. So I think strategically uh, for Ukraine and militarily, it, it, it was a really smart move because it's cutting off a key logistic line uh, allied to the fact that uh, it would appear that Ukrainian uh, military drones have also disabled uh, one of the Black Sea Fleet's key ships, uh, which I understand now is in dry dock and out of commission. Um, again, hugely significant. Russia has had the run of the Black Sea uh, really throughout this conflict and have been able to do whatever they like, uh, moving um, uh, fuel and logistics around. Now, with the continued attack on the Kerch Bridge, uh, with uh, ports in Russia being attacked by these Ukrainian drones, you know, I think it's making the Russian logistics planners really think twice and, and start to scratch their heads. Because if those troops in the Crimea cannot get fuel and ammunition, um, you know, they are very quickly going to run out. You know, reports earlier this week that the Russians fired half a million rounds of ammunition uh, last week. Now, to maintain that, that is a massive amount. Um, you, you need several ships like the Zing moving constantly. So uh, I think generally a very smart move. And it's not just the Russian ports. We've seen you know, attacks on, on logistics lines in, in Crimea and also in the east. The Russians announced today that they have arrested uh, a Russian for blowing up a pipeline in Crimea, a Russian that allegedly has been uh, working for the Ukrainians. So there are an awful lot of things for the Russian planners to think about. And as the pressure grows in Crimea and in the east, if Russia can't keep these people supplied, then, you know, they are going to have to capitulate. Uh, so I think generally a really smart military strategic move. If you cannot protect your key shipping, um, and, you know, thinking way back to, say, the Falklands War in the early 80s, when, when Britain lost some key sh support ships like the Atlantic Conveyor, uh, which ha had a lot of key um, military capability like Chinook helicopters, it almost changed the shape of the conflict. And what it means is you have to put a lot of assets in protecting those ships, um, which should be doing other things. Uh, so I think, you know, any Russian ship now cruising around the Black Sea hitherto did so without a fear in the world. Now, um, I mean, they always knew that Russian ships that got close to Ukraine were were, were fair game. And the loss of their um, uh, capital ship last year was a significant blow to the Russians. Now, um, I think the other thing that's massively significant is is the drone that took out both the tanker and the Russian naval ship potentially travelled over 500 miles undetected. Um, now, to deliver that undetected over that distance with a payload of about half a tonne of high explosives is, you know, is unimaginable, I think, before this conflict. We knew that you could fire a torpedo over, you know, a couple of kilometres. Uh, we know that we can deliver, you know, drones uh, in the air, but to do it in the sea and carrying, you know, a drone flying in the air can no way carry that sort of payload. So, um, yeah, I, I think that every Russian naval captain will be thinking twice and every Russian sailor, uh, merchant or, or Russian Navy, again, is, is going to be concerned. And adding these complexities into the minds of Russian planners and Russian military people, again, puts Ukraine back on the front foot. And also the other key element to this is starving Russia of foreign currency. There are still, unfortunately, some states around the world who are buying a lot of Russian oil uh, and uh, Russian fertilizer and stuff like that. Uh, if 
that supply can be cut off. And uh, when you look at the value of the ruble, which is absolutely through the floor, um, it, it's, it's rather odd that Russia is now relying on the US dollar to keep its head above water. And uh, if that feed of dollars can be restricted by restricting oil uh, and other exports, then then all the better.